Hey, good morning, traders. All right, today is Monday morning, August 19th, and I just want to uh, do a quick impromptu update on this market. We're going to take a look, especially at the SPY. I want to show you something I'm seeing, but also gold, the VIX, the dollar, and our favorite, yours truly, Bitcoin. Okay, so I'm just going to jump into the charts here and we'll go right to the dollar. The dollar, you can see this M pattern that I had drawn. The top of the, uh, the other side of the M would be the top of this ascending uh, wedge, which was bearish. Of course, we expected to drop out of it. Let me get my arrow and point to it. So this would be the top side of that wedge. Also, the beginning of the M pattern, we dropped out of that wedge as expected. Came down to our moving averages, popped back up and as expected dropped of course my arrow here was not in anticipation of how fast we would drop in fact if i'm being honest i didn't expect the dollar to drop so quickly but here we are we have dropped uh, faster than the arrow indicates and have come down to this pink trend line which I was expecting us to hit and potentially bounce off of, uh, but it is with the rate at which the dollar is declining, it could very well be that the dollar breaks through this support, comes down here to 100, and then down to, this is our big line right here, a big line in the sand is this 99.52. It's a descending trend line that comes way back from I don't know how far I go back on this one. A long ways back. Uh, so, let's see if I zoom out here to the weekly, we can get a bead on where that actually comes from. I mean, we touched this way back in 84, and I think I have it, uh, yeah, 84 would, would be uh, the first time we touched it. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, this will be definitely major support and you can see the the 200 day moving average is right over the top of that uh, so we've got uh, considerable support underneath us and i expect at some time we will hit those and bounce okay let's see where was i at i got sorry i got interrupted by several important messages that were coming in had to pause the video so the dollar is coming down, uh, and again, I expect it to come down to this uh, 99.5 mark. Below that, we have our uh, 200, actually not day, but week. Did I say day before? I believe I did. Uh, 200 week moving average, uh, just below that, or above that, just above that. All right, so there's our 200 week moving averages. So it's somewhere down here, guys, is where I expect the dollar to bounce. And it will be at that point that the S&P uh, stocks, et cetera, et cetera, will uh, probably uh, be set for another pullback. Uh, as of now, I think we are on our way to that blow off top. And I'll talk about that more in just a bit. All right, on to the VIX here. The VIX, look at this spike, guys. Man, I mean, we came all the way. If you were in, if somehow you knew the VIX was going to do this, uh, Buco box, I mean, you would have gone anywhere from $12 to $15 up to $67.5. I mean, what is that, like 4 5x uh, from that point? Um, that, that would have been a great... Uh, investment also shorting to the downside if somehow you knew but here we are guys we're back after this uh, uh carry trade from japan which you know sunk sunk the markets here in the u.s uh, i won't expound on that more if you guys don't know what happened with uh japan raising interest rates and the carry trade if you're interested in that google that that's kind of what we expect happened and and brought the markets down anyways the vix is now back into this uh low range uh and so with the dollar down and the vix down we should expect the spy to fly i'll look at that in just a bit first i want to jump over to gold 
because I want to show you something. Our target for gold was $2,300 per ounce uh, here on the GLD. That's represented in $232.99, $233 basically. If I were a betting man, I would start to take off a little bit right here because we can expect since this target has been reached, a bit of a pullback again in in gold all right and then maybe it comes down to one of these moving averages that's where i'd buy back in if i was trading gold now, most people don't trade gold because it is so manipulated heavily heavily manipulated as is the silver market but in this case you could probably trade it i got that target guys from this inverse head and shoulders pattern and here we've broken the neckline, so I expected us to come up here, and that we have. Now, gold in the future will continue to fly as uh, inflation, uh, or, you know, I expect it to continue uh, into the future. I mean, once, and when I say inflation, I'm talking about decreased interest rates by the Fed. Once the, the Fed starts decreasing interest rates, which we can expect here in September, at least one drop, um, that decreases along with it the buying power of the dollar. All right. So that means the dollar will continue to decline as the Fed drops these rates. And that's why this... Uh, this target here may be actually rather conservative. Uh, I think we break down below this support eventually once again, though that may not happen for a while. And when I say a while, six months, a year, um, more. You know, we came down relatively quick from our target, um, our double top here, 106, and now we've come right down to support. I wasn't expecting a drop that fast, so it could be that we break this uh, bottom support here faster on the dollar. But anyways, when the Fed decreases interest rates, um, that decreases buying power of the dollar. That decreased buying par uh, power in the dollar gets factored into the market, so the market should continue to fly. Now I'm over to the SPY. I want to show you something here on the well, let's let's go to the weekly first all right so i drew this uh, cup and handle pattern let me put it in auto here so you can see what i'm talking about all right so here's the cup here's the handle and then when we had that panic sell off in the markets from the carry trade japanese carry trade we broke below the neckline but if you'll remember in the video the last video i did i said this x pattern is not, I mean this uh, this is this excuse me this cup and handle pattern is not invalidated if we close another candle uh, back above this neckline and that we did last week all right so this candle right here doesn't count as a break and I'm going to show you on the two week chart why that is let me get rid of that X there let's jump to the two week chart. And you can see that on a two-week chart, that drop was simply a wick down. That doesn't count. That's not a body close below that neckline. So we still have a valid cup and handle uh, pattern here on the two-week chart. And let me show you where that takes us in the uh, S&P, the SPY. Right, that takes us to a target way up here at around... I would say 650 to 700 uh, at least could go higher. Um, but this cup and handle pattern is showing us that the market is nowhere near slowing down. I know people are expecting this recession, this, this recession slash depression, as am I. But it may not come in the form that you guys think. All right. Keep in mind all fiat currency in and it throughout history how has it crashed it hasn't been a deflationary crash it hasn't been a deflationary market where people went into the apocalypse of recession slash depression it's always been hyperinflationary 
that is like Zimbabwe style where people are carrying wheelbarrows of money to buy a loaf of bread. And so if we see the dollar, the end of the U.S. dollar here in the U.S., that is the way a recession or depression might look. It might look like, in, from the stock market perspective, everything is flying, but your dollar is secretly being, uh, you're, you are secretly being taxed by the Fed who is decreasing rates and decreasing the buying power of your dollar. That is the way a recession or, or the final recession, I should say, or the final depression, the end of the U.S. dollar will look. That's my expectations. All right, so we're going to continue to fly. But meanwhile, your dollar is going to buy you less and less and less. And you can already see that, right? The pricing of, of houses, of cars. So you go to the grocery store. I mean, every time I go to the grocery store for my wife to just buy a few, you know, uh, odds and ends, I end up spending $100, $200 on three bags of groceries. Now, I know I don't look for those coupon sale deals like my wife does. I just buy what I need. And I'm fortunate enough to be able to not pay attention to those prices so much. But I personally, I can't imagine how struggling families are doing it. Uh, and it's only going to get worse the more uh, we print the dollar. I mean, it's just that's just the truth, folks. So th this is the way I see a recession or depression possibly looking like in the uh, U.S. along with the end of the U.S. dollar. All right, so full send on the way. We are uh, at this point, I would say probably going to 650, 700 on the SPY. At that point, I may take a little bit of. Uh, off the table again as i did during just before this last flash crash right you guys know that i took uh 50 off uh before we did this flash crash and then i stuck that 50 percent back in at the bottom all right so that's the way to trade and fortunately i was able to time that uh correctly and hopefully we can do that again uh although that's not the purpose of this particular channel uh, here in this channel, we do crypto trading. Though I've been re more and more requests from you guys to do stocks and s stock trading, so maybe I get into that more. I'm doing very well on stock trading as well, uh, but there's, there's only so much time that I have. Uh, so that's why I've just focused on crypto. Let's jump over to our uh, Bitcoin. All right, our Bitcoin chart. Here is our Bitcoin chart. Just zoom back out here to the daily so we can see what's going on. And uh, so we are on our way to end of year target, which I've said consistently is 85 to 90,000. Somewhere up here, one of these levels is going to act as resistance. All right. So it could be 85 to 95,000. But one of these levels, they're both rising. So it's hard to tell when we hit that is my end of year target and i still believe that is so far that is still a valid target we have this inverse head and shoulders pattern all right the neckline of which is 48,400, and just a few you know few days ago we wicked down and almost kissed that perfectly that in my opinion counts as a touch and yet we still remained in this bullish descending channel which counts as a handle from a larger cup and handle pattern. Uh, the neckline, which you know might be drawn from some like something like this. All right. So then we have a larger cup and handle pattern. I'm not going to draw that out, but that takes us you know up to 130, 140. That would be the target sometime next year, and I see that uh, well within reach sometime next year. All right. So that is our our target on bitcoin before i believe this cycle will end and at that point you guys want to be taking risk off so far we have not seen really any sort of a bull market in the altcoin space we saw a little pop there i would call that like a mid-cycle uh, uh bull run essentially if we 
you know dive in any one of these cryptos crypto is where it was almost during the bear market right so this is xrp xrp was down here it got as low as 15 16 cents so uh oh that's persistence i'm sorry uh, xrp is right here all right so xrp doing a little bit better you know during our our bear market we were way down of course the sec was you know pursuing their lawsuits and nobody knew how that was going to turn out but here's our bear market you know lows got into you know down here to 30 cents all right so we're barely double that right now uh we're in a bull run but it's a slow run, bull run it's not like we're used to seeing in the altcoin markets and there, that's why i believe the last uh pop here and alts we can jump to something like Bitcoin Cash to show that as well, uh, is more of a mid-cycle top, all right? And so we still are in a bull run, but these are areas where you want to buy if you still expect a longer term uh, or end of year bull run in the altcoin space to come. And I do expect that. Though as of now, a lot of you know that I'm in uh, safer positions, uh, less volatile, uh, less, uh, shall I say, shitty, less shit coins, meme coins, and more of the big uh, large cap uh, cryptos, uh, mid cap uh, cryptos, uh, just just to preserve uh, the portfolio in case we do have another drop down. Anything is always possible. At this point, the probability tells me that uh, we are going to proceed up. But that's just I'm just judging from chart patterns, right? So we're still in this bullish ascending or descending um, channel which can also count as a handle from a larger cup and handle pattern. But that's not to say that we don't take one more, we don't get one more, uh, you know, FUD, piece of FUD, war, whatever, rumor of a war, uh, plague, you know, the, who has got this monkeypox thing going on. Now, you know, there's some... Fear is the way that uh, governments can control and uh, governments are right now uh, fighting to maintain their control over people everywhere. It is worldwide. You see what's going on in the UK. You see what's going on. Uh, look, uh, name any country. All right. It's the same thing all over. These people are psychophants. All right. Miscreants. They're sociopaths that only want power and only care about themselves. Uh, now, people are starting to wake up to that a little bit more, but that's always been government, right? It's just legalized mafia. And uh, for whatever reason, people like that. They like to, to not have to do the work of thinking for themselves. Uh, they want somebody to be able to dictate uh, you know, their health and their safety, et cetera, et cetera. And... Uh, so we've given them all that control and now they have it and they want more and more and more and more. It's like an addiction. Like it's like it, it's a crack addiction. All right. For miscreants. And so these misanthropic psychophants are uh, just fighting for more and more and more power. And this uh, is the war that we're currently in. And this is going to um, play out in markets all around. All right. Um, so if there is another um, way of creating or uh, manufacturing that fear uh, so that the powers that that's how the powers that be feed on us uh, and take more control. Uh, if they can do that, they will do that. So expect that. That is just basically the rule of thumb these days. All right. Another way of uh, manufacturing fear. And it will just not end until we stop it as a collective. And so far, that has not been very successful. 
though it is becoming better and better and more people are waking up to what's going on. And as people wake up, that fear will play less of an impact on our decisions. And as it plays less of an impact on our decisions, uh, the powers that be will have a harder time uh, you know, taking hold of that control because that is the mechanism for which they control us. All right, so this is what we have to keep in mind. This all plays an impact on our markets and should play an impact on how you invest as well. Uh, and so these news items are just uh, unpredictable. You can't predict when there's going to be a new uh, insane type of, of war, insane uh, policy dictated by the powers that be but if that happens it will spike the fear once again and uh, will impact the markets uh, to the downside uh, all right so we can never count on those and that's why with bitcoin it is possible that we still drop from that channel and really uh, come down to that neckline uh, testing it uh, very well and before we proceed up all right, that's my video and update for the day. I hope you all have a great day. And remember, uh, keep the peace. Peace, y'all.